Hello students, welcome back. The question is from 1996 exam. Just have a look at the statement. It says, consider the synchronous sequential circuit in the figure below. Draw a straight diagram which is implemented by the circuit. Use the following names for states corresponding to values of flip-flops as given below. So from this table, you can see Q1 is the most significant bit and Q3 is the least significant bit. And when the values of Q1, Q2, Q3 are 0, 0, 0, the state is S0. When the values are 0, 0, 1, the state is S1. So on till S7. Okay. You can see, I've drawn this counter on the board. It consists of three flip-flops. And all three are D flip-flops. Okay. Let us analyze this one, the second flip-flop. Whatever is connected at this input D, will be given as it is in the output Q2 whenever a clock signal is received. Okay, that means say this output Q1 of this flip-flop is zero. On seeing a positive edge of clock, this flip-flop will just transfer this zero in output. Okay, that's it. Similarly, if value of Q1 is one that will be transferred as it is in the output Q2. Okay, that means this column will be filled very easily by just copying the values of Q1. So I'm copying Q1's values as it is here. See, suppose on this state, 0, 1, 1, whenever a clock signal is given, the value of Q1 will be shifted to Q2. So Q1's value is 0 and it is shifted to Q2. That's it. Okay. Similarly, the value of Q2 will be shifted to Q3. Okay. Because this one is also a D flip-flop. So I'm copying that column as it is. Now, whatever is the output of this XOR gate will be shifted here. Okay. See, this output of XOR gate is connected to the input D and you very well know on seeing a clock this value of D will be given as it is in the output Q1. Okay, so we need to determine the XOR of Q2 and Q3. XOR of Q2 and Q3, I'm writing it here. So I've just noted down the output of this XOR gate for these values of Q1 and Q2, sorry, Q2 and Q3, okay. So this XOR gates output will be copied as it is on Q1 whenever a clock signal is received, okay. So XOR gates output is zero. Whenever you see a clock signal, this zero will be copied as it is in the output Q1, okay. So I'm writing zero here. Similarly, this is one, one. This one is zero. This one is also 0, 1, 1, 0. This column is copied as it is here. Okay. Because see, suppose at any random time, the output of this XOR gate is 1. That means value of D is 1. Whenever you see a clock signal, this one will be copied on Q1. That's it. This is how a D flip-flop functions. Anyways, we have got the truth table. So now let's just draw the counting sequence. You can see whenever the current state is zero on seeing a clock, you will remain on this state only. Okay. That means state zero goes to state zero only. That's it. But whenever you are on state one on seeing a clock signal, you will go to state four. One goes to four. So here we have state four. Whenever the present state is four, Upon seeing a clock signal, you will go to 2. Now we have 2 here. Whenever the current state is 2, upon seeing a clock signal, you will go to 5. Okay. Here we have 5. The next state will be 6. After this, this is 6, the next state is 7. Okay. 
and whenever the state is 7 you see a clock signal you will go to state 3 the next state from here is 3 okay after 3 you can see the next state is 1 so we'll return back to this state only this is the counting sequence now there is a b part to this question let's answer that also so b part says given that initial state of the circuit is s4 identify the set of states which are not reachable okay so if the current state or initial state is s4 from the state s4 you can never reach to the state 0 or s0 okay so answer of b part is s0 because you just keep on giving as many as clock signals you want you'll just keep on looping between these states only you'll never reach state 0 so your answer to b part is s0 okay